Russian military propagandists complain that the collection of money to help the Russian army has been discredited, as a result of which Russians are transferring less and less money to Z-War correspondents. One of the Russian military bloggers announced in his Telegram channel that he intends to stop the program of collecting money and helping the Russian military, since recently he has not been able to close the collection and is forced to pay extra money of his own for this. I get very tired from working as a humanitarian and I am left without money because I often close them at my own expense, the propagandist admits. The situation has sharply worsened after a number of Z channels were caught stealing. The latest major scandal involved volunteers Katya and Valya from Donetsk who were accused of fraud and embezzlement of collected funds by the deceased Russian UAV operators Ernest and Goodwin. The remaining Z-War correspondents have purchased expensive cars and even real estate in recent months using the money collected from Russians for their own needs. After the information appeared in the Russian press, Russians began to refuse monetary donations. Russian public is actually more concerned with how soon the war will end. This may already be forcing Vladimir Putin to adjust his public position on the invasion. It reveals that during almost two years of full-scale war, Putin has been unable to induce Russians to volunteer for combat in sufficient numbers. There are no lines at army recruitment points in the central squares of Russian cities. Instead, according to the conflict intelligence team and other independent analysis, official numbers of volunteer recruits are wildly exaggerated. Russians may be prepared to support the war verbally, but they are clearly not rushing to fight themselves. Putin understands the mood in Russia better than many Western commentators and he appears to sense a declining public appetite for the invasion he unleashed almost three years ago. If this trend continues, it could further constrain Putin and his actions. Naturally, some Russians are unhappy with the situation. Millions of people are opposed to authoritarianism and bloodshed and some of them openly express their views and resist. Two consecutive Russian attacks on a medical center in the northeastern Ukrainian city of Sumy killed at least eight people on Saturday morning, officials said. The first strike killed one person. Russia attacked again while patients and staff were evacuating, said Ukraine's interior minister Iyer Klemenko. Local officials in Sumy said Shahid drones were used in the attack. Eleven other people were wounded, the head of the Sumy City Military Administration, Alexei Drozdenko, said. Sumy lies some 20 miles from Russia's Kursk region, where Ukrainian troops have been deployed since August 6 in a bid to divert the Kremlin's military focus away from the front line in Ukraine. Ukraine's Air Force said it shot down 69 of 73 Russian drones launched overnight as well as two of the four missiles. City authorities in Kyiv said around 15 drones had been shot down over the Ukrainian capital and its outskirts. In Krivi Rih, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's home city, local officials said Saturday that a man's body was found under the rubble of an administrative building hit by a Russian missile on Friday, bringing the death toll from that attack to four. In Russia, the defense ministry said Saturday that air defenses overnight had shot down four Ukrainian drones over the Belgorod region and one over the Kursk region, both areas bordering Ukraine. One person was killed in Ukrainian shelling of the Russian border city of Shebekino on Saturday, Belgorod regional governor Vyacheslav Gladkov said. Two other people were wounded. <laughs> Сюда тут рай! Ты живой!